Hey folks, Dallas here with Privateer Press. Last time, we used an airbrush to add that lived in beat up look to our model. Today, we're gonna wade through the swamp and learn how to paint some gator skin. So let's get started. To begin our gator skin, we're gonna start with painting his little belly here. Start out with a little red flesh in your palette with our little grabby brush. Remember, this brush doesn't matter. It's just there to pull the paint out. I only need a dot of the moldy ochre, not much. And the hammer fall khaki. Same amount as rind flesh. I'm just doing 50 50 hammer fall, rind, and a dot of moldy ochre. Just mix that up and see what it looks like. You just want kind of a warm khaki color. And then that little bit of yellow in there just gives it a little liveliness. All right, I'm just gonna use my trusty P3 hobby brush here. We're just gonna paint his little belly. Nice base coat. This would probably take two coats to get a nice coverage. And this doesn't have to be perfect, because when we go to paint the scales, we're gonna, we're gonna decorate this up a little, make it fancy. All right, let's add a second coat just to get a nice solid base layer on our little gator guy. I accidentally painted his back scales, but that's okay. Let's go right over it with another coat of paint. Now, while that's drying, let's go ahead and mix up our color for our back scales. For our back scales, we're gonna do a 2-2-1 mix of Crixbane Base, Warm Green, and Crixbane Highlight. Let's start with this Crixbane Base. Grab some of that. One and two. A little Warm Green here. One and, oops, two. And that gives us that nice green color. I'm gonna add a drop of Crixbane Highlight just to lighten it up. Because you're painting something natural and living, some uh, variation is always good. So it doesn't have to be a perfect mix and you can kind of play with these colors. You know, if you want a little more, little more gray, you can add a little more of the Crixbane highlight. If you want a little more dark, you can do a little more of the Crixbane base. It's up to you. It's just kind of your army your way, right? Just took a little Crixbane highlight in there. That's the color, I like that color right there. All right, let's put that base coat on there. So once again, my base hobby brush, my P3 base hobby brush, and just start base coating that back scale. Once again, we'll probably do two coats of this. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna lay a wash down over top of this, and that'll smooth everything out. And what I'm gonna do where the two colors meet, so I'm gonna kind of, just kind of touch out and make an irregular pattern where the two colors come together. Something like that. Gives us that nice natural variation in skin. Oh, this little gator model. He's like happily casting voodoo spells on people. He's pretty dope. And he's nice and big and chunky, so he's all easy to paint. That's why I like painting living creatures. There's no wrong way to paint skin, really. There's no wrong color. You can really get in there and just have some fun with skin colors and tones. On any of the living creatures you might be painting, even humans, you can add more green, more red. You can make them dark. Make them real dark, you can make them calm dark, you can make them super light. You can add variation, freckles, blemishes, all the things that give visual interest. Make something more unique and living. Just don't be afraid to experiment. All right, for our next step, we're gonna lay a wash down over the entire model. To start our wash, we're gonna use a little armor wash. We need enough to go over the whole thing. We're gonna give it a little tone with some Ortic Olive. Just grab a bite of that, mix that in there. Maybe a little bit more. And we're gonna put a drop of mixing medium in there. This just dilutes the paint, makes it a little more translucent, and gives it some body. Gives us a nice green color. And just make sure that's nice and thin. Couple drops of water. All right, let's lay down our wash. And we're just gonna put this over the entire miniature. I'm just gonna, just wanna wash this over the entire guy, front and back, even his little belly scales. Just work it, just control where it goes. So you want it to pull in the recesses, but not make puddles up on the upper surfaces. You just want it down in the recesses. You want it to pull up in the recesses and kind of go over the top of the rest of the miniature. This just really darkens it up. 
gets in all those little crevices to help us create some contrast. There we go. Like I said, in the recesses, but like here in these toes where it's all, you don't want that all puddled up in there. You just want it down in the recess, but not a big wad ball of it. Just use your wash to make sure it's not splotchy. Just control it. If you see a spot that needs a little more, a little less, you just use your brush to pull that away. And once again, a little variation is good. All right, for our next step, we're gonna add a little bit of shadow just to increase the contrast. And for that, we're gonna be using Battlefield Brown, Thornwood Green, and some Armor Wash. We want a nice brown green here. I'm gonna grab a little Battlefield Brown and some Thornwood Green. Just to green that down. Maybe a touch more green. And then maybe a drop of Armor Wash. Maybe two drops. Alternatively, you could maybe pull a little bit of this over there just to darken it up. That was good. Let's do that. Let's just grab some of this. We're just going to apply this to the undersides, like the leg here. A little two brush to give it some contrast. Blend that out just to make it more visually interesting. Then the sides of these little arms here, just to put that shade on that. A little bit of brown tone. And just put this anywhere you need some shadow. Just let that second brush do that work for you. Just soften that edge and let that transition happen. You can even put it in like the deep parts of the belly scales. Just to add that brown to it. And just all those undersides. Just giving that brown color. Undersides of these back scales. A little quick blend down the back scales. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm working very quickly as you can see. It's fairly translucent, so it helps cover up some of that ink, takes away some of that gloss. As you get to these little plates, it's not quite as important to blend them out. You just kind of put a little brown in there, just like that. There we go. Let's put some highlights on this guy. For our highlight step, we're gonna be using some Hammerfall Khaki and Minoth White Base. This color, of course, with the Hammerfall Khaki, will tie it back to our beginning color, the base color for the belly. The Minoth White Base will keep the yellow in the mix while at the same time lightening up the Hammerfall Khaki and making a really good highlight. And depending on how dark and how light you want it, base your mix on that. So I'm going a little more not quite 50-50, a little more Hammerfall Khaki than the off white base. All right, let's paint some belly scales. I'm just gonna paint a little line along the top edge of each belly scale, like so. And then I'm gonna fill in the rest of the belly scale, just leaving a little bit showing. I'm painting this kind of scratchy, just kind of putting my brush in there and just letting there be texture. Now, of course, this is where your patience comes in. The patience, practice, and perseverance. If you didn't want to do this step, you could skip it. You could just put some little highlights, just some little tingy highlights. You can paint as complex or as easy as you want. It's all up to you. Just be sure you leave the lines in between each scale and just work your way around all these little bellies. For the upper scales, we're gonna use a mix of worm green and thrall flesh. Let's just go 50-50. Once again, we're just gonna put some highlights. On the back scales, we're just gonna draw little lines. I'll draw these on the upper surface of the back scales. And we're just gonna leave the little shading down in the cracks. We're not gonna go all the way up underneath the armor plates. Just getting some highlight lines on. And make sure you do the edges. Get a nice edge on those. Little, some little glint highlights there. Now on the back scales, you just want to do kind of the same thing as the belly scales. You want to paint a top edge, sort of fill in some of the scale. Just look at where the light's going to hit. Paint that in, and then block out a section of the scale. These scales where you're going to catch a lot of light, you can kind of paint the whole scale. 
And as you go down under, you paint less of the scale. The more shadow, the less of this color. Then on the face, you want to accentuate all the little scales. Sometimes it just takes a little dot to highlight something, like across the knee here. I'll just put like a little dot across the knee. Then these upper scales like this, maybe fill in the whole thing. And just do less and less of the scales you go up. Like this side here, just want to accentuate that top plate. And as you can see, not every scale needs everything. Just sort of going very quickly here. Just working those top scales, putting in this color. It's a lot of work, but it's gonna look cool when it's all done. Now, for a final highlight, we're gonna use some Menoth White Highlight. We're gonna apply this in the most upper parts of each scale on the uppermost parts of the model. It has little tiny dots. So we're just gonna put the tiniest line right along this edge. Just a very fine highlight. Maybe here. And then on the scales, just in those top corners, you don't need to go all the way down. Just a little dot right where you want the most highlights. You can create the illusion of like some little chip in his skin or a little line, something that just looks like it's scratched or a little more beat, a little more rugged. And this step is optional. You don't have to do it, but it does punch up that contrast and can help make your scales look a little wet. You can also do the belly scales. This is actually my most fun part about painting gators. Just these little dots. Something about it just brings the gator to life. Let's throw a little Thamar Black on our gator man and see how he looks when he's all cleaned up. Our gator is looking fat, happy, and ready for the next step. Join me here next time and we'll take a look at tackling two types of feathers. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and check out the links in the description below for more in this series and some additional information on the P3 hobby line. I didn't even know that we were gonna say gator skin. It, <laughs> it just came out. It just came out gator skin. Ooh, that gator skin. Woo, where you at, alligator?